In React Native, beep, 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 alarm in your brain. Okay, you're gonna have to undone at some point, uh, probably, or you're gonna have to investigate, or like, it's not gonna be easy. We have this exact problem. Cool, perfect. <laughs> Secondly, if you have to deal with web views in React Native, same thing, beep, 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 beep. And then if you have to share cookies across web views, alarm, nuclear war, like, <laughs> you're gonna spend two months. You thought it was gonna spend, it was gonna last one week, it's gonna be two months. Uh, no, anyway. So that's what we had to do. We had this uh, basket screen web view and this login web view. And of course, when you log in in one, you want to stay logged in in the other. So there is a cookie sharing between both. Um, and this causes problems. Why? So I'm going to quickly explain how cookies work in, uh, in, on mobile. So uh, on iOS, because Android works better actually. So on iOS, there is uh, two modes for web views. One mode is use WebKit, which has its own cookie store. And the other mode is not use WebKit, which is the same as when you do no, uh, fetches with Axios, etc. like it's the standard cookie store, which has its own cookie as well. Supposedly the sharing between both works, but actually it doesn't, and there are problems all over the internet about this. And so we had to basically find a solution, because the thing is, the web views with WebKit are the new ones, they work much better than the web views without WebKit. So you want to use web views with WebKit, which are their own cookie stores, and do the other calls without WebKit. So you need to use both stores and, and make them talk to each other. Uh, we had to find solutions to make that work, so we are basically generating a cookie with, in one store and then forcing it into the other, whatever, the details don't matter, it's, 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 uh, you, you will forget tomorrow, so if, if you have the problem just come to me or Josh apparently, which is solving it as well. Uh, but we don't solve it, it just works for us. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> um, so it's like magic. I'm interested to know yeah. um, what, what exactly your need is. Um, but so what I want to show you is how we got to understand all of this, how we debugged it. Um, so not everyone knows, but first of all, in the React Native debugger, which we all use, if you right click here, you can, you can enable or disable network inspect, by default it's disabled, and see your network calls in uh, React Native Debugger. It seems, to people who have not done React Native, it seems stupid, but a lot of people actually struggle and are like, wow, I can't see my network calls and go crazy when it's actually it's quite easy. Uh, the problem is that, so if I go in a web view here, you don't see your web view network calls, apparently. Yeah, so customer state are calls to, um, uh, that use Axios, but are not what the web view does. So the first problem is you don't see your web view call. So it's hard to debug the cookies and what's going on with that. Uh, second problem is that the React Native debugger infers what the cookies are from what's in the phone, but they, they don't do black box uh, network call debugging. Like they don't debug the actual network. So, Concretely, our problem was that when sharing the cookies, we ended up having two cookies. The, the, the cookie for the login is this one, called front-end cookie. The, the root cause of our problem, after investigating for so long and undoing BAM, was that we had two front-end cookies set with two different values, uh, thus creating the, the problems that we had. The React Native debugger never allowed us to see that. Why? Because it doesn't do proper debugging. To do proper debugging of the network calls, you need something that looks like a man-in-the-middle thing that looks outside the phone and can intercept what you're doing. That's not what React Native Debugger does. We see the two cookies here. Right? No, this is response cookies and request cookies. Actually, I wasn't able to reproduce the bug again. <laughs> so, yeah, that's not what I'm going to show today. So, uh, the message I want to give you is, if you want to properly debug network calls on your simulator or on the phone, actually, the problem was happening on the phone and not on the simulator when we did it, so we had to plug our phone and, and use what the, the tool I'm going to show you with the phone. Um, so you need to use Charles Proxy. As a, who has heard of Charles Proxy? Who has used it? Okay, so Charles Proxy, you can also use it for your on your computer to debug uh, Mac OS calls, you can use it for the simulator, you can use it on device. It's something, it's like a man in the middle where you have to, you will, you can see tutorials. Uh, you have to add some proxy settings, some SSL certificates to your Mac, etc., to allow the fact that it's a man in the middle. I don't understand at all how it works, but 
it was super handy because whatever you do from now, it just looks at your simulator as a thing that does calls on the internet and intercept whatever it does. So you can here see all your actual calls. Um, and so for example, the calls that my web view did are, um, so customer state, so on the, you, here, sorry, on the debugger, we, saw, we see only customer state calls when actually all these calls happen. And so the one that interests me in this case is uh, checkout card, which is what the web view does. And you have all the information that you need here, the cookies in particular, etc. So I wasn't too able to reproduce the two front-end cookies problem uh, today, but this is where we noticed uh, what happened. So you have very handy tools to filter the calls, and you can look at the set cookie, actually, the set cookie um, tab here that allows to see when the backend actually tells you to set a cookie, and here we're able to debug that at some point it was telling uh, to set a cookie for a domain that was dot www.matetest.com I mean like there was a different domain and this is why it created two cookies and this is how we fixed the, pro fix the problem so it seems obvious now but I didn't know the tool and I had to hand on BAM to realize that it existed and that it can uh, let you debug much better so just for you to know it's out there and help you if you have problems with network calls in general that's it okay. Okay. that I didn't know about cookies since I'm here. Um, so the cookie domain, if you just put the URL, www.theodo.co.uk, it's going to, the cookie is going to be associated just with that domain. But if you put dot www.theodo.co.uk, it means any subdomain that starts with something else. And we didn't know that, and that's how we failed at seeing the problem. So yeah, if you see a dot before a cookie, don't be surprised. And that's it. How long did it take to set up? Oh, yeah, questions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it took, uh, with someone that knows, two or three minutes. How do I find something? Uh, you hand on or you're on internet with a tutorial in 15 minutes, I guess. It's super it's really easy. Mm, yeah. It's free, you can use it 30 minutes in a row and then it closes and you have to reopen it. Which is annoying. <laughs> <laughs> or you buy it. Are you using it just for mobile applications? Though? Yeah, and I'm using it when I have a problem. Otherwise, the React Native Debugger is more handy. Have you had to use that for anything after this book? Uh, yeah, recently, actually. But uh, it wasn't needed in the end. It's, I think it's for very specific problems. And you don't know what's going on. Thank you.